It's Dina with Pretty Productive. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today what I'm going to be doing is a January 2024 budget setup. So let's go ahead and get started. If you are new here, I will try to kind of explain what I do as I go. If you have been with me for a while, then you could probably do my budget for me. So let's get started. Um, first of all is income. I take my pension and my husband's pension and I divide it by two. And so that gives us $39.15 each. We are both paid once a month at the beginning of the month. My daughter pays me $40 a month for her phone bill. I don't put in incremental income. So incremental income could be if I decide to work some hours, I do freelance artistry. Um, so I will have incremental income, but I don't budget it because it's very, um, it's not confirmed. So I could get sick or the hours could be canceled, things like that. I do use the incremental income to add to my sinking funds or savings or maybe to um, buy something that I can't seem to fit into my budget. So our income for the month is $39.15 plus $39.15 plus $40 is 7,870. So I just take this number and bring it over here to income 7870. Then um, as far as our bills, we are debt free, including our mortgage. So what you'll see here as far as our bills are what I call our living expenses, plus those expenses that you have when you pay off your mortgage, like property taxes and things like that. Um, I save for annual bills every single month, um, whether it be Christmas or birthdays or um, property tax or auto insurance, things like that. I take the amount of the bill, I divide it by 12 months, and that's what I put away every month. So that when that bill comes due, I have the money set aside. Um, so we'll start with landscaping. It's 140 We do have two um, services per month. Our phone is finally down. Um, we were paying 262, I think it was, to AT&T, and now we're with T-Mobile, and it's 135. Electricity, I'm going to guesstimate at 200. Water and trash has come in; it's 83. Southwest gas, I will estimate to 60. Internet is 120. Direct TV is 120. Netflix is 16. HBO Plus is 11. Hulu is 19. Life insurance for my husband and I is 106. Our gym is 60. Car wash is 25. And our medical is $1,575. So we are both retired. So there is a gap between when you retire and when Medicare kicks in. So we went through a company called Thin Blue Line it's for first responders or a family of first responders. And that was the least expensive we could find. It's half of what we were paying when we were cobring um, from our old jobs. So, you know, it's a bite. So our homeowner's insurance is, I put 130 a month away for that. Auto insurance is 270. So it's just my husband and I, and then we have a, a third vehicle as well. Property tax, I put 400 a month away. Our HOA is due this month, it's 279. That did take kind of a pretty big jump this month. Pest control at 35. So up here is my fixed expenses, meaning that no matter what, these are due. These kind of fluctuate based on when they're due or if we have service or not service. So 140 plus 135 plus 200 plus 83 plus 60 plus 120 plus 120 plus 16 plus 11 plus 19 plus 106 plus 60 plus 25 plus 1575. So total fix is 2670 and then what I call my variable fixed is 130 plus 270 plus 400 plus 279 plus 35 is 1114 I add these two together so my total fixed expenses is 3784 
Okay, so now I come over here to what I call my lifestyle. These are areas that I could adjust if I needed to. You bring you in a little bit more. Sorry, I'm kind of losing my light here, but my neighbor was super loud. I could not film. Um, groceries, I'm planning at 500. Eating out, 200. Spending, 200. My mom, 50. Entertainment, 100. Miscellaneous, 50, personal care, 200, household, 100. So just to kind of give a little bit more insight into these categories over here. My spending category is just money that I put in my wallet. I don't track those transactions. I can save it or spend it. It's my one category that I really don't put any parameters on. My mom is in a memory care facility. Um, her only expense that comes out of our pocket is just treats that we bring her. At this point, she's in a very much a donut stage. So if I come in without donuts, she pretty much doesn't want to talk to me. So I um, usually pick up a half dozen before I go, and that's like $10. So I kind of just put $50 in there for that. Entertainment is anything I do, usually not with my husband. So with my sisters, my kids, things like that. Miscellaneous is $50, and that's just like my buffer catch-all. Personal care is pedicures, manicures, um, the tip for my massage, anything like that that I do in personal care, um, color my hair, anything that I buy for personal care. Household is just that $100. Uh, that could be paper towels, it could be something for the house, anything that we use to run a household. Um, I no longer am doing groceries online or as a separate category. Gas, I put 300. Medicine, I put 100. And then giving, I do tithe off the top, so before I even get to this number. So I kind of just took that out as a category. I do have some subscriptions, so Simple Paper is 35. Faded Chronicle is 41. Elements is 80, that is a massage subscription. Audible is 16. Paper Minty Studio is $100 but it's random, it's not every month. So I think she said her next release was going to be in March. So I'm just gonna write 35. So I can put 35 away each month until March. And Coffee Monster Co. is quarterly, but it will be due in January of 49. So if I add up my lifestyle, so 500 plus 200 plus 200 plus 50 plus 100 plus 50 plus 200, plus 100, plus 300, plus 100, plus 35, plus 41, plus 80, plus 16, plus 35, plus 49. It's 2056. So 2056. I do put 500 away into savings every month, and that is not, our emergency fund is in with our financial planner. So I keep kind of a, just a little buffer, <laughs> what I call a buffer, um, savings account that's attached to my checking account. And the things I've used that for is, um, like I just got a dental bill that was not planned. I have nothing left in my medical, so it will come out of that account. So anything like that, that really just wasn't something I planned on and I didn't want to take money from our emergency fund for it, it can come out of this little buffer account that I have on the side. Um, but I do take that off the top before I start to figure out my sinking funds. So if I take my lifestyle of $37.84 plus $2,056, so fixed plus lifestyle plus savings is $63.40 and I subtract that from my income. My sinking funds are 1,530. Let's make sure I did that right. So if I have 78.70 minus 500 minus 2056 minus 3784, 1530. Okay. Okay. So now it's the fun part. Now we get to kind of spend some money. So well, we do, but we don't. <laughs> so over here in my sinking funds, um, for my car maintenance and tags, I need to put 70 away every month until September when they're due. Christmas, I put 300. 
a month away. My envelopes we'll figure out in a moment. General fund I'm not going to contribute to. So general fund is just that. It's something that's kind of a combination of yearly subscriptions like my Prime membership is due in January. It will come out of that general fund. Um, my tax accountant comes out of this general fund, but right now I'm not contributing to it. Gifts I'm not contributing to. Home improvement I am not. Medical I am. 200. I need to build this back up. My daughter has a child. My granddaughter Sutton. It's her 529. I put $100 a month into that. Technology, I'm not funding. Vacation, I am not funding. We are saving for a wedding, so I am putting 500 in the wedding. So if I look at this, and I had 1,530 for sinking funds, and I take out my 70 for the car tags, 300 for Christmas, 200 for medical, 100 for Sutton, and 500 for the wedding. Okay. One, five, three, oh. oh, I subtracted it. Minus 70, minus 300, minus 200, minus 100, minus 500. Okay, that leaves me with 360. Let me just look at that one more time. 70 plus 300 plus 200, plus 100, plus 500, minus 1530, 360. Okay, 360 is correct. So from that, what I need to calculate are the envelopes. So I have envelopes that I try to fund every month and they are usually birthdays, um, family, my niece and nephew's birthday, my daughter's dogs, these occasions right through here. So let me see what I need. So for Valentine's Day, I already have 50. That's fine. Anniversary, I only have 50. So that's not enough. St. Patrick's Day, I have 50. That's plenty. Easter, I have not started. Family barbecue, I have 10. Halloween, Thanksgiving, I don't need to worry about. Christmas will be funded online. And then I usually put 50 in each one of our birthdays, but I don't think I'm gonna have enough to do mine. So if I do, I kind of worked on this, but I have less than I thought I was gonna have. So. What I wanted to do was to start these, so one, two, three, four, five, so it would be 100. And then another 100 for birthdays, plus 100. So that would leave me with $60. Okay, I'm gonna put put the whole 60 in niece and nephew's birthdays. Okay, so that would be 360. So my envelopes would be 100, 200, 360. Okay, let's make sure that's right. So 70 plus 300 plus 360 plus 200, plus 100, plus 500, 1530, 1530. Okay, that is it. So 37.84 for fix, 2056 for lifestyle, 500 for savings, 1530 for sinking funds equals 7,870, so it balances. Okay, so one thing that's going to be a little different is I do have money left in my back to bank and this was a combination of 200 that my husband gave me for Christmas and then this was money that I had in my um, 100 envelope challenge that I just threw into my back to bank. So I'm going to show you what I do with this separately from my cash stuffing because 
it is incremental income and I do kind of have a place for that, but I'm not gonna figure that into this budget. So I'm just gonna put that to the side and when I go to cash stuffing, I will show you what I'm gonna do with that money. Okay, so once this is figured out, then I need to go back to here. So I just went ahead and wrote in the categories, but these are different now. So nieces and nephews, it's not 19, it's 60. I think everything else was the same. Okay, so I posted an earlier video that was my 2024 setup and kind of explained how I was doing things a little differently because it wasn't working for me to just take the amount that I was putting on my credit card and then just transferring it over at the end of the month. I was kind of spending the money kind of not as not as well as I should have. <laughs> and so it was really becoming a challenge. So I decided to do that any of my bills that I'm going to be putting onto Capital One, I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out in cash. So anything that comes on my card that is not accounted for already. So if I spend in a planner category or I, you know, I go to Walmart and spend a really not a category for it, I need to figure out where the category is gonna come from because right now I feel like I'm spending the money twice. So. Um, trying to really rein in my spending is basically what I'm trying to tell you. So once I figured out this, now I can kind of go through and just explain here. So landscaping is cash. My phone is already coming out of my checking account. So I just, electricity comes out of my checking account. Water trash goes onto my card, my Capital One card. So that's cash. Southwest gas comes out of my checking account. Internet is cat is my card. Um, DirecTV will be my card. Netflix already comes out of my account. HBO and Hulu is coming out in cash. Life insurance already comes from my card. This will be cash. Car wash will be cash. And then medical insurance already is billed to my checking account. So the ones that have a dash, I'm not pulling cash for because they're already coming out of my checking account. The homeowner's insurance, my auto insurance, and my proc property tax are all transfers. So these three get transferred to my Capital One savings. And the reason why I do that, number one, I don't wanna get mixed up with money left in my checking account, but I get a better return on my money there than I do in my credit union. So I just take $800 at the top, first of the month, transfer those into my annual bill savings account. My HOA is coming from my checking account and pest control will be cash. So anything with the C I'm pulling out in cash. All of these will be cash. All of these will be cash and these will be cash. So these normally bill to my credit card. Now they'll be in cash. And then over here, these are transfer. Well, this will be cash. Um, Christmas is a transfer. My envelopes are cash. <clears throat> Medical is a transfer. Um, Sutton comes out of my checking account and wedding is a transfer. So what I've done is I have individual savings accounts through Capital One that are attached to my Capital One credit card. And so I just create little buckets of money and I transfer money in and I transfer money out. So if I spend something that is for Christmas on my credit card. I just transfer the money from my Christmas savings account onto my card to pay it. So I know how much money I have for Christmas and I know when I spend it that it's marked Christmas and then I can just go ahead and transfer it. So that has been the system I've used for the last three years and it has worked very well for me. So it's working for me. Um, there was a time that I could not have done that because I would have carry a credit card balance. I no longer do that. So, you know, it works for me. I know to some people it's a lot of in and out, but it's just the way my brain works, so <laughs> it works fine. Um, so I've just transferred the ones that I need to take out in cash over to here. And I'm not gonna do all of these, but I do kind of want to give you an example of how I kind of break it out. So for example, something like groceries, 
finish groceries. So groceries is 500. I'm really thinking it's going to be 125 a week because it's a five a four week month. So what I will do so that I can pay myself back or my card back, I'm going to take it out in 50s. So 100, 200, 300. So one, two, three, four. Okay. 100, 200, 300. 400. Okay, so 450s and then 420s and 45s. Four 420s, four 45s. So even though this is my monthly budget, I will divide it by the four weeks so it kind of keeps me on track of how much I should spend per month. So for eating out, it will be. 420s, no, 820s, 7, 8, and then 410s. So that would be 200. And then I do the same thing for spending. Okay, so I'll just go through. I won't do this on online because it takes me forever <laughs> to figure out. But at the end, I should be pulling out $2,959 for the month. And then I will do my cash stuffing. That will take me into both my weekly envelopes as well as my seeking funds and then my bills binder. And then throughout the month, as I use my card, I'll pull the money out of the envelope, take it back to the bank to pay that off. Now, I do keep a pretty healthy cushion in my checking account for this reason. So if there's any surprises, um, I'm not having to rush back to the bank because I have that cushion there that's protecting me so that if something pulls out of my account that I wasn't expecting, then I'm not going to, you know, be in the negative in my checking account. So if you have any questions at all, please let me know and I will go to the bank uh, probably tomorrow and then I will film my cash stuffing in the next day or two. So thank you so much for watching. If you have not done so already, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.